Hello and welcome to the first episode of Toxic Love. This is Bow and Arrow Tarot. And this is the first episode of a new series that I'm starting to live stream every Monday at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And this is going to be a, a reading into three signs that I'm going to pick from the deck of my 12 zodiac signs here. And we're going to take a look at specifically the toxicity in your, in your love connection, right? So this is what a lot of people will call a shadow reading or a shadow twin flame reading. So uh, be prepared. We're going to be using some decks that are um, a little bit dark, okay, because we're really going to be trying to delve into sort of the nature of um, any sort of, uh, I want to say, yeah, toxic, toxic love that you have in your life, all right? So uh, for this reason, we're going to pick the three cards from the deck, so I don't know, you know, who we're going to be reading for, but who, you know, the three signs that come through that need the message the most will be coming through, all right? So let me shuffle that. And get ready to pull out my three cards. <clears throat> and then we're going to do each reading for each sign. All right. Okay. Get rid of these. All right. I pulled this one first. So that one's going to be first and then we'll come to that one and then the final one later on. So the first sign for today is Taurus. Wow. That beautiful Taurus sign of the bull earth sign. Okay. So Taurus is coming through. All right, folks, let's get into it. What's going on with Taurus? What's going on with their love connection, right? Taurus is, uh, associated, like I said, with earth. It is also a sign associated with beauty, right? Beauty and lust, right? Okay. Lust, sex. Uh, a lot of people associate that with Scorpio, but Taurus is being the sign of the bull is a very physical and being an earth sign is an extremely physical sign. Okay. Um, so, Let's get into what's going on for Taurus and their toxic love connection today and see if we can't get some insight. I'm going to shuffle and cut this deck. I'm going to move you over here, Taurus, for now. Okay, and cut this deck. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. For you, oh, Taurus comes Knight of Wands. For your person, the Ace of Wands. For you, Two of Swords. Your person has the Ace of Swords. Interesting. For you, the King of Swords. And your person, the Knight of Wands. And finally, the Queen of Swords. And the Page of Pentacles. Wow. All right. Bottom of this deck, the Hanged Man. Okay, hanged man energy, talking about sort of uh, not putting your best foot forward. I'm going to come back to hanged man because hanged man is a strong energy and it take, it's worth noting. But for the most part, inspiration coming in more than anything, right? Let's move this up so you can see him there. Okay. All right, Taurus. Wow. Right away, I see your nine of wands and for them. So this, your first set of cards here, um, is how you see yourself, right? How do you see yourself um, in general and in the relationship? And for you, Taurus, um, penned in, right? Penned in. Um, almost, uh, I want to, I was caged even. There's a feeling of being caged here. Um, this is a toxic connection with someone. <clears throat> For them, I'm going to say you are something new, right? You are something really new. You are something that is uh, exciting for them. You may even be a little bit more mature than them, but there's a discrepancy here in, in energy right away. You're dealing with somebody, Taurus, who themselves sees themselves as sort of this fantastic, passionate, fiery thing, this new thing in your life, right? And yet for you, you feel very much caged. You see yourself as being caged, as not having any sort of, uh, I want to say, um, outlet, opportunity, chances. Let's go further. 
Um, this is how you see each other. For them, they have an ace of swords and for you, a two of swords. So we're talking here about, again, for them, this is all brand new. It almost feels like you're dealing with someone, Taurus, who cares for you in a way that you don't care for them. They love you in a way that you don't love them. And there is a burden here. There's a feeling of a burden. There's a feeling of... Uh, you may be feeling some kind of way because you know you don't, your feelings don't run as deep for them as they've run for you, uh, as they, as their feelings run for you. You're really something new for them. And yet for you, you feel tedious. You feel, you know, worn down. They may be a lot of work for you. And there's a decision as well. You see them, two of swords. It can also be that you're dealing with somebody who for you is very indecisive. This person is not someone who, um, you know, they, I think they've, you're, there's a feeling here of being let down, right? There's a feeling like perhaps when you first got together with this individual, you thought that they were somebody who could make moves, who was responsible. And yet you're starting to realize that you're dealing with somebody who's very sort of wishy-washy, wavering. They're unable to sort of like really, um, uh, make any like meaningful decisions or moves of their own with some fire and some passion. And yet uh, for them, they see you as, you know, this great sort of resource of information. And that again could add to some of this burden, burdening feeling that I feel this weighing down. You feel like you're carrying a lot of the responsibility. How do you see the relationship? Well, Knight of Wands for them and King of Swords. Again, it's coming through to me, Taurus, that you're the one who's way more responsible. You're the one who's kind of dealing with um, you, you're dealing with sort of the grown up issues and this individual you're with is kind of like just really excited. They're they're acting very much I'm going to say not like a child, but definitely there's an immaturity there. Um, they're very, I want to say they're very fiery. And so you may be dealing with those fire sign, Leo, Sagittarius or Aries. Yeah, they have that kind of fiery attitude. But there is a naivete there. There is a young feeling there. There's an immature feeling there. You may be a little bit older than them. All right. Let's get some clarifiers, all right, before I go to the final cards for this relationship. Um, so, toxic love. What's toxic here? What's toxic here is that you're unhappy with this connection because it's an uneven connection. And now we're going to get into some of the... Uh, the nitty gritty, right? What's the communication like? What's going on between the two of you, right? And then we're going to start to pull some of the shadow cards and go a little bit deeper. But this is just the baseline. You're definitely the one, you're trying to establish some ground rules. You're the one who's trying to establish some, I mean, I want to say healthy, not boundaries, but healthy requirements, you know? Show me what's going on for Taurus. Ace of Cups, right. So this was a new love, I think, in the beginning, maybe even for both of you. Justice, wow. There's an unevenness here in terms of paper and money. There's issues to do with court here. It could be that you're dealing with somebody who uh, is married, Taurus. You may be dealing with someone who is married or who has uh, other obligations, and you know they're supposed to be making a decision you know, they're supposed to be sort of sorting that shit out. We have four of cups just popped out and flipped over. So, um, you know, things that are coming to you that are being offered, you're just not there for it. Okay. Um, feels to me, Taurus, like this was an ill-fated connection, right? There may have been a spark of love, but there's other responsibilities here that aren't being taken care of. You're expecting them to make a decision. They're not making a decision. They're kind of leaning on you to make all of the decisions, and it's not your responsibility. And I think I'm starting to feel here that there is um, a growing resentment happening. There's a resentment going on here. What makes this connection toxic, and I feel the toxicity here is because you're dealing with somebody who's somewhat adulterous. You're dealing with someone who to a certain degree may have promised certain things for you, may have promised that, hey, I'm going to leave this person. I'm going to get everything sorted. And they never felt, they never came through with that. They're not coming through with that. And so uh, 
there may be lies that are starting to come through. Let's start get let's start to get into these darker cards. I, I, let me address also the hangman at this point. There's been a lackadaisical attitude, okay? Hangman, oh, nine of swords right underneath the regret. There's been this lackadaisical attitude with the hangman in terms of like, you know, just like putting up, right? Um, you're dealing, I feel like this hangman energy is definitely talking about the toxic individual. I don't want to call this individual toxic. I want to call the love toxic. And that's why I call this series toxic love, because it's very easy nowadays. And, you know, these days where everybody is, an, you know, every time somebody has a bad relationship, they're like, it was a narcissist. Well, look, I guess you could say everybody has a touch of it. And yes, it's always the other person who's toxic. But at the end of the day, it's the it's the connection that's toxic, right? It's the connection because we allow it to happen to a certain degree. And the hangman energy here I'm feeling is for this individual that you're with. And they kind of are the type who always gets by by the skin of their teeth. They always get by with sort of saying, yeah, I'm going to deal with it. Or, you know, they, they do the bare minimum. You know, they, they do the bare minimum um, to get by. If they can sort of like get out of any responsibility, they will. Um, you know what I mean? You keep talking to them as like until you're blue in the face to get them to sort of step up. And what's going on here is that you're starting to not be interested in, in them anymore. The toxicity of being with this individual who's very, okay, a card popped out the disguise. Okay. Um, yeah, somebody gave you their representative when you hooked up with them and not who they really are. And you're starting to realize that they're just not, you know, they're just not who they say they are. They're not as responsible as they say they are. They're not as cool as they say they are. The disguise has been in play, right? Okay. So that's the toxicity waking up to realizing that you're dealing with somebody who is not at all who they say they are. What else is going on here? Um, again, this could be somebody you're finding out is married, or maybe you knew they were married and they say they left, left their person. Oh, we're separated, but they were supposed to get a divorce. Did they ever get the divorce? No, they never got the divorce. You know, hangman energy. They're just kind of hanging around. They're really not doing the, putting the effort in that they should. You're fed up with it. You know, you're starting to be really, really fed up with it. Um, and they're coming at you like they, it may be as well that you're start. you know, they're trying to cuddle. They're trying to be more, you know, they're trying to sweet, be sweet with you and you're not having it. What's the other one to kiss? Exactly. Right. So this is what I was just feeling coming through the kiss. You know, you're starting to really be like, ew. you know, the kiss is coming in from someone, but the person is so kind of like, you're starting to be so disgusted with them and the moves that they make that the kiss is not anything that you desire anymore, right? You're starting to say no to their cup of love. All right. Um, let's go and pull some more. Let's pull a few more in terms of this connection. Taurus, you you know, and there was love there in the beginning. I think in the very beginning, it was really like, wow, you know, um, this is a great, you know, it, it, it's one of these kind of, and what, another thing that makes it toxic because of one of these kind of love connections that the love is there. Like there's something about this person, Taurus, that you really love. It may be that when you're with them, you have like the greatest time. It could be that when you're with them, um, it feels right. Being with them, just the two of you feels right. But when it comes to responsibilities and the outside world, when you guys come out of this bubble together, it, it's all wrong, right? It's, it's all wrong. They don't sort of like put the work in that should be put in to safeguard that bubble, right? You're in the, you know, it's like when you're in the bubble with somebody and you're loved up or, you know what I mean, uh, with them, it's like when you come out of the bubble and have to deal with the rest of the world, you want them to to feel strongly enough about safeguarding this relationship with you that they put the work in to safeguard it, right? That they work, that they do what they need to do so that you two can continue to be together. But you're dealing with somebody who's not willing to do that. So it's constant hurt. Every time you expect them to step to the plate and, sh you know, and, and be responsible, um, they're not. And then it hurts even all the more because you're, you know, it's starting to make you feel like that love connection you have with them is not real. Emptiness. There you go. Boom. Self-indulgent lust. There it is, Taurus. You lust them, right? 
You love them very much. There's a lustful aspect here. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. There's a lustful aspect here, right? Like I said, Taurus is a very, very physical sign, right? And this individual, there was definitely, there's a connection there. The lust is strong. You enjoy that. You know, you know that, you know, if the, if the physicality is there for you, it kind of needs to be there for you to, not for you to be in love with somebody, but for you to carry on with them. And yet, and still outside of it, we have self-indulgent and we have emptiness, all right, self-indulgence and emptiness. Look at that. You know, it's just like it's becoming empty. The cups are becoming empty from this person because you're realizing that, you know, you're not really about it. <clears throat> and this is painful. And what comes from this generally is all the other toxic behaviors, the fighting, the arguing, right? God forbid there's alcohol or drugs involved, right? This then becomes very much one of these sort of, well, you say you love me. I do love you. Well, why don't you do what you need to do? Well, I'm trying. And, you know, and you break up and you get together and you break up and you get together. And this is the toxicity, right? This is the toxicity and it's not changing. And everything that you try, and this is where the age old adage, you can't change a person, right? So how do you move forward? Realizing this, hopefully this reading, if you resonate with, with it, is giving you some insight. At the end of the day, we can come to these final cards, the Queen, Queen of Swords, the Page of Pentacles. There's some money issues here as well. It could be that you're the one who's been taking care of the money. You're the one who's been taking care of the bills. You may be the one who's really sort of making sure everything is done and it's time to pull away. They're going to have to put that work in. They're going to have to do those sort of uh, the detail work and of taking care of themselves, right? It's time, Queen of Swords, also Taurus, if you're realizing this and wanting to know how to get out of this to toxic cycle with this individual of expectations being let down over and over, it's time to really lay down sort of the law in terms of who you are and what you expect, right? Like, it's, you have to look inward to kind of come out of this and be like, well, hang on a second. Who am I? Do I really want to continue to deal with this? And that clarity, that sort of self, I want to say, attention and focus and intention that you're putting on yourself will bring the clarity that you need to sort of see this connection for what it is. It's going to be very difficult for you because, Taurus, that lust and love is there right? That lust and love is there. And for you, that's a potent com combination. You know what I'm saying? That's a really potent combination, lust and love, you know? And for you, you really, in your heart of hearts, want this to be the one, but unfortunately, everything around it and the person that ultimately you're dealing with, you may not get that satisfaction from them. All right, guys. <clears throat> All right. So this is the reading for Taurus. Take a moment to look at the cards, as I say, after every reading and take a look at the symbolism or the imagery to see if there's anything that speaks to you. That's going to be your talisman this week with regards to this relationship or dealing with this individual to remember sort of what you, you know, took from this reading that's helped you hopefully <clears throat> and apply that to the situation. Okay, guys, so give you a moment and then I am going to. Pull up these cards and pull up all the cards bit by bit <clears throat> and begin to look at the next reading, the next card for the next reading. Yeah, these are difficult ones, um, Taurus, you know, those relationships, you know, <sighs> With people, you love them. We can't, you know, you can't live with them. You can't live without them sort of thing. Let's give this a good shuffle. We're going to move on to the next sign. Who is the next energy that came through? If you hear anything in the background, it's like my cat's literally destroying my place, running around. Okay, guys, the next reading is for... Scorpio. And didn't I mention Scorpio and the Taurus ring? Scorpio. Scorpio and Taurus are actually uh, meant, uh, meant astrologically meant to be a good uh, combination. All right. Scorpio, toxic love. What is going on? We're going to move you over here and get into your cards. 
Scorpio. Mm -mm -mm. You came through today. So we are going to read for you and see toxic love that Scorpio is involved in. What is going on? Show me. All righty. <clears throat> For you, the chariot moving on, your person has justice. You see them as a seven of swords. They see you as a fool. Relationship, king of pentacles for them, the moon and the final outcome, six of cups for them, two of pentacles. Bottom of the deck, we have seven of wands fighting for your patch of the world, right? Fighting for what you have accomplished so far and not giving it up to anybody, right um let's start let's get right into it scorpio for you the chariot it's a path you're on a path right now <clears throat> and it's a journey that is uh you anticipate to be quite some time there's justice that's how your person is coming in they're coming in with justice there may have been some legal issues some official issues with this individual recently could very well be <clears throat> Feeling to me that, you know, you feel as though you've been taken advantage of. Something has been taken from you. Um, you've been dealing with somebody who you think has been quite treacherous. And there is legal issues involved here. Justice is coming in. There is legal sort of official business involved between the two of you. And you see them very much as somebody who's a thief in the night. Somebody who's come along and really taken something from you. You definitely feel slighted by them. They see you as full energy. Um, I'm going to say that very much uh, uh, seeing you as, as someone who's very naive. You may be dealing with somebody who's... Uh, Played you for being naive, played you, played you. There's a feeling of being played here or a feeling of someone definitely who believes that they are, uh, that they are wiser than you, that you're kind of the fool. You're the fool. You're the one who just kind of leaps off uh, the cliff. And in this toxic love reading, the energy of the fool here comes off very sort of, uh, sort of irresponsible. They see you as somebody who sort of, you know, you feel like you could just do whatever you want, right? There feels like almost a lesson here. There may be some karma here or a lesson here because very much a feeling of sort of like, for their point of view, they're seeing you as somebody who just like doesn't really have very much responsibility or care in the world and can sort of do whatever they want. And you see them as somebody who's very much a thief in the night and someone who's been very treacherous to you. But it may be that what they've put you through recently regarding this official business may have been uh, some sort of payback, Scorpio, right? It may have been some sort of like, hey, you think you can just do whatever you want. Here's a wake up call for you. Boom. I took some things from you. You you you're pissed about it, you know? You you're you see it as a backstabbing scenario, but the energy here is very much a vengeful back and forth petty energy between you and this individual. Okay? It could, you know, this feels very much like a reading that's on the heels of some other um some other sort of uh, events that occurred between the two of you. How you see your how do you see this relationship? Well, you still see yourself in a position of power and authority and wealth, right? You're the one with money, king of pentacles. That's how you see the relationship and yourself in it. You're the one who you see yourself as very, you know, whatever went on here, it did not sort of break up your money situation at all. Right? It didn't break up, you know, it didn't destabilize you financially or anything like that. It's certainly you don't feel that way. Let's start to get clarifiers here. Um, but your individual, your person that you're in this toxic connection with, they're really unsure about what's going on with you or this relationship. They don't really know what's coming next. There has been this weird interaction here. This, it's almost as if you guys have been in a battle. There may have been something to do with the courts. There may have been domestic violence. There may have been lawsuits. There may be a divorce, a separation, child support, or, uh, you know, any kind of sort of, I want to say, uh, official court 
official and or court business that has interfered in this relationship. But from their point of view, it, they're not sure what's happening next. They don't know what's coming next, right? What card just flipped over? This one flipped over in the deck. Ten of Swords. There's a feeling of being exhausted here, having dealt with a lot of shit. A lot of uh, sort of bad communication here. Ten of Swords, a lot of like, it's done and over. Whatever went down between you and this individual is done and over. And now it almost, it feels here very much like the residual is the, uh, there's no love lost. There's no love here, you know, uh, I'm going to say. Certainly, there's no love exchange energy here. It's, if there ever was any, um, this feels much more like, this was just a bad connection f from the beginning. And it's just like progressively, just each and every time you guys are were together, got together, got back together, it just got worse. And so finally, it came down to, like I say, some kind of official business that had to come between the two of you. As I say, perhaps a divorce, perhaps even a family court in some way, separating the two of you. And... Um, you know, going your, both of you going your way, but you, you're kind of going away. You, you know, you don't trust, you don't certainly don't trust this person anymore. You definitely resent this individual, but you're still going away with this feeling of being on top, having money, having your security, still being sort of the captain of your own ship. And your person is pretty much going away and from this relationship with a sense of unease and uncertainty, moon energy is very uneasy, uncertain. They're not sure what to expect. It feels very much like um, there is an unsure anxiety here. Show me some more. Hero fat. Yep. One more. And the world. Yeah, it feels very much like, you know, this relationship was ill-fated to begin with. Um you know, it was always meant to sort of go down this way. Hierophant is there. Very, um, I want to say, perhaps there was a desire to try to make this a conventional relationship, but the two of you weren't conventional. Um, the issue, though, the toxicity here, I think, though, is this feeling that you're coming away with of feeling very sort of cheated, you know, uh, stabbed in the back, you know, uh, I want to say victimized or, you know, this is a strong energy here. And I just, you know, if you're holding on to that, that's the toxicity here, right? That's what needs to happen is to let go of that feeling. Let go of that, right? It needs to be let go of Scorpio, lest you sort of exact or enact more bad energy and karma here. Show me the curse. Wow. Definitely feels cursed. And again, the mermaid, mm, mm, mm. the curse. So it's like, again, I say this relationship was extremely ill fated. It's almost as if, yeah, the curse, it was cursed from the very beginning. Everything that's come out of it has been nothing but sort of like heartache, trouble, not even so much heartache because there doesn't even seem to be so much love here. I don't think the love even ever actually got to be. It was like from the very beginning, there was just strife and weird sort of, um, I want to say, uh, requirements, power games, etc. It's just from the very moment, it seems like this relationship was always up in the head for both of you, up in your heads, not in your heart. And also, as I say, ill-fated and cursed, right? Um, you went a very traditional way, like boyfriend, girlfriend, let's do this and let's do that. But it feels very mechanical here. It feels very cold here. The mermaid has come in, right? Like, okay, you believed in something that was magical, but it wasn't. It's like murder. Do you see her? You know, the mermaid there is like bloody and dying, you know? So what you expected wasn't real. What, you know, this, this sort of fantasy, uh, this feels very much like a relationship that was just very, from the very, very beginning, just a fantasy of, of something that just was never there. And the resentment was on both sides. I believe that it was never there yet. You're the one who is walking away from this feeling very sort of like, this is cursed. This was cursed. You know, look at all the shit I had to deal with as a result of all this. You have a lot of resentment and anger coming out of this. And that's the toxicity here that you need to let go of. Show me, 
Show me, show me. More vibes. Mm, mm, mm. Disillusioned and sell out. Damn. So that's the feeling, right? Sell out. That's what it feels like when I say you feel like you've been stabbed in the back. There's this weird feeling here like you believe the other person is the one who gave up. They sold out. They gave up. They gave in. They ended up stabbing you in the back. You don't trust them anymore, right? You're, you know, it's like you're like you're the sellout. I'm not the sellout. You're the sellout, right? And then disillusioned, right? This is coming in again. Like what I said earlier, this was all just a fantasy. Let me see if I can get that. Can I get that too? There we go. This was all just a fantasy, you know? And it's like waking up now to all these court issues, you know? Uh, it may, Even though it's not financial burden on you, it's just like, wow, this is what this turned into. For some of you, I feel strongly there was some family court issues. There may have been restraining orders. There may have been uh, orders to stay away. There may have been orders to pay money or there may have been orders to sort of like have supervised visitation. You know, if, if you had, I don't believe this is a connection where there were children because I don't feel like this was a, if there were children, if there is children in this connection, they're from other people. They're certainly not with each other because there was never enough love here for the two of you to stay together and have children. Right, this was an ill, ill-fated relationship that never really took off the ground as any sort of real relationship. But the toxicity here is the inability to let go, the inability to let go of this resentment and hate and sort of like this resentment here. Very much on your part, I feel Scorpio, you feeling this resentment because it turned out the way it turned out, right? But the thing is, there's nothing to resent. There's no one to blame because neither one of you were really here for it, right? And the feeling of here, Seven of Wands, the feeling of having to really fight for something that, wait a minute, was this ever worth fighting for? Because it almost seems as though like neither one of you were really that committed to it. You know what I'm saying? All right, well, I'm going to leave it at that. This is your reading, Scorpio, your toxic uh, connection, toxic love reading. Let go, let go, let go, right? This was ill-fated. It was always meant to fall apart. Here we have, uh, let me finish off also with these last two cards, the Six of Cups and the Two of Pentacles. You go on to very much, uh, I think you come out of this. What pulls you out of this uh, feels strongly to me like a connection with another person from your past. There may be an ex-lover in your past, Scorpio, that comes in and gives you exactly what you thought you were going to have here. Definitely feels like an old friend or an old lover, someone you were with many years ago. I'm going to pull that card out on top here. Many, many years ago. Uh, you know, the connection was always strong. It never really sort of went away. And this person comes in and really sort of helps you. This, for some of you, this is strongly possible. And they really help you sort of pull away all of this um, anger, resentment, uh, you know, desire to perhaps for vengeance here. they It pulls you away from that because it's like, oh, this is what I wanted here all along. You sort of forget about this. Your individual is coming out of with, out of this sort of really going off their own path. They're dealing. They're not even interested in this. They're moving along. Uh, they have a lot of physical things to deal with. A lot of money issues. A lot of jobs. They have a lot of projects going on right now. They're very very busy and absolutely not thinking about this connection at all. So it does feel like the positive outcome in this is that both of you here kind of go off your separate ways and you kind of find what you were looking for in this relationship and this person kind of just goes on with their life, right? Doing whatever. It's like as if they just walk out the door and the door is shut. They're busy. That's about as all, all the information you're going to get. They're busy. But it's like not no more information is needed for you to know because this is well and truly finished. All right, guys? And like I say, take a moment to look at the cards. Check it out and uh, see if there's any sort of symbolism that speaks to you, imagery, and hold that in your mind. Remember it. That's going to be your talisman for this connection. And if there is times during your activities over the next weeks or several weeks that you see that talisman, it's just a reminder for you to sort of remember 
what you what you got from this reading and what you realize for yourself and be in that moment, be focused, be intentional in that moment and pay attention. Talismans are there to remind us simply to pay attention, right? Meanings, yes, there's meanings, but most important thing is that it, that connection to that meaning is jarring you to that moment. And it's being in that moment where the magic happens. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull up these cards. And get ready to do the final reading uh, for today for Toxic Monday, uh, Toxic Love, Monday, 4 p.m. Um, interesting, interesting. Take Scorpio and put her away and bring out Gemini. Wow. All right, so this is the final reading. Gemini. Oh, hi. I just realized somebody sent a comment. Madonna, Sisk. So I'm not doing all the signs today. Uh, with Toxic Love, I pick three signs um, from my deck of 12 astro astrological signs to see which signs I will do. So it could be that next Monday uh, episode, Leo may come up. Um, but I just concentrate on the three signs that come forward that are needing the insight the most or dealing with with uh, their toxic love today and uh, are coming through to me for the message, okay? So it's not a 12 and all Zodiac uh, reading. If you are interested in Leo readings, you can check out my Friday Fire app, uh, series where every Friday I do all the fire signs at 11 a.m. live streaming. That's for Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo. And those are love, life, and career readings or whatever comes up in a reading, okay? And that's uh, Friday Fire, every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out my Leo reading. All right, guys, thank you for that comment. And let's move her, Gemini, over here and get ready to cut your deck. All right, Gemini. Four of Swords for you, for them. Ace of Pentacles. You see them as Nine of Wands. Wow, they see you as hanged man. Relationship, king of wands. And for them, wheel of fortune and the outcome, Leo, strength, and ten of swords. Bottom of the deck. Uh-oh, and another ten. Wow. Ten of wands. <sighs> completion, completion. Gemini. Um. Wow. Okay, you felt very caged in, right? This week you're coming in. You felt very caged in with this connection here. Um, but right now you're being very sort of reserved. You're not sure which way you want to move. Okay, you're not sure... You're not sure what you want to do next. Four of Swords energy is a repose. It's kind of like you are not making any decisions right now. You're not sort of any definitive decisions, you're in contemplation about what to do next. And specifically with this connection, what are you going to do next with this connection? Your person is this week coming in with a lot of energy and work. For them, they're starting something new, Ace, Ace Pentacles for them. So they're starting something new, some kind of project, I want to say, job, endeavor, uh, something that is very much grounded in the, in the physical, the earth energy. So we're talking about making money or creating something, even creating, uh, manifesting something, uh, somebody who's very creative, makes art, et cetera, something like that. Whatever the case may be, it's something that is ex uh, very sort of, um, I want to say there's a blessing here, right? There's a blessing here. There's definitely a financial blessing that is coming through to them for this opportunity. For you, you're kind of stepping back in this connection, right? How do you see each other? Nine of Wands, they see you as hanged of man, hanged man. So for you, you see them, you see them as very much stuck in a way. Okay, you're dealing with, and it, this may be why you're hanging back before you make any sort of moves right now, because, and I'm going to come back to this bottom card too, it feels to me like you're dealing with somebody who doesn't ever quite make it, right, to the next step. They kind of are always still one step short. They're always still trying to find that, uh, 
that resonating up, you know what I mean? Something always goes wrong or they're always unable to make it to that level. Oftentimes, I want to say for you, it feels, you're dealing with somebody where you feel very much like, yeah, this opportunity is coming in, but there's been so many opportunities before and they never make the most of it. They never do anything with it, right? So this is right away that shadow energy that I'm feeling here. And you're kind of sitting back. I want to say it may be that in the past you were the one who kind of helped them make their decision, helped them sort of move along. And right now you're not feeling like doing that, right? They see you as hanged man. So they're feeling it too. You're pulling away from them and they're feeling as though you just don't care. They feel like you just don't care anymore. You're not helping them out anymore. Uh, I'm going to say that they're starting to feel like the relationship is like, you know, is starting to, things are starting to go wrong, right? You're coming into a feeling for you of sort of like, I'm going to say there is a feeling of dominance here. There's a power play in this connection that's making it toxic as well. It feels to me strongly like you're the one who very much is in control here. You're the one who is sort of the power broker. You're the power person here in this connection. You're the one who knows what you're doing. You're very sort of decisive. You're, you know, you're able to make the right decisions for yourself. You're not afraid of anything. You have that strength. And you're dealing with somebody who isn't quite like that. And I feel like the toxicity here is almost as if you you know that, and it's not that you use it or abuse it, but there may be a little bit of exploitation here, right? Why are you doing that? Well, I think to a certain degree, you've begun to feel resentful. You may have begun to feel a little bit sort of like you're better than them. There has been, there's a... There's a dark feeling that has started to come in here and it's an uneven power, power, you know, power dynamic. Show me, Gemini, the world, the magician, three of cups. Yeah, you're hanging out with, a, you know, you're starting to feel like they're just not up to your level. You know, you're, you're starting to feel very much like, and I want to say there, it may be, again, having taken advantage, you may be, you may have taken a little bit advantage of this person, Okay. Let me straighten these out the right way. It's always like I always get them. Uh, you know, you may have taken a little bit of advantage or you may have sort of... It's like when you date somebody you know is a little dumb, you know? I hate to put it like that, but it's like, okay, you know, they're a little bit dumb. You know, so you, you, you're you not as honest with them. You kind of... You don't necessarily... It's not so much that you manipulate them or you exploit them, but you know that they're not that clever. So you know you have to dumb things down for them or you don't bother telling them certain things because why bother? They're not going to get it anyway. You know, and it just leads for a toxic, uneven power, uh, power dynamic that eventually always leads to resentment. These kind of connections almost always lead to some kind of resentment, some kind of, I want to say, um, you know, you just start to, you start to, you know, if somebody doesn't stand up for themselves and command respect, you, they start to get disrespect. You know, this is not a static thing. You know, these, these things change, you know, how much, you know, the energies between two people, how much I give, how much you give, how much I take, how much you take, you know what I mean? If, you know, how, how much do I respect you? Am I respecting you less and less? If I respect you less and less, then my behavior towards you is going to begin to deteriorate, right? If I respect you more, my behavior towards you and interaction with you is going to increase in a more sort of stable and positive way. So these things are fluid, you know, and, it, and, and it's the erosion and amongst these things that kind of sort of wear a relationship down and you end up in this toxic mud, you know, fighting, toxic mud of toxicity of, you know, bad communication, you know, playing games. Then you start to play games. You start to be resentful. Let's get into some of the, uh, the shadow cards for this. So for you, yes, you're feeling kind of on top. It's feeling very much like you're dealing with somebody that is not on your level, um, and you're deciding, what should I do? What came out? Rain popped out. Rain, you know, okay. Rain coming down. Jury, you know, a lot of emotions. 
the crematorium. Okay. You know, it's depressing. <laughs> it's depressing and it's dead on arrival. It's time to burn it. You know what I mean? It's time to burn this like connection and just, can we get it? There we go. And just realize it's not meant to be anymore. Okay. We've got the rain. We got crematorium. It's dark. There's no sunshine. There's no, you know, beautiful fields to look forward to. It's just like it needs to be done. And that's kind of what you're leaning into. Um, but again, the toxicity here as well includes this sort of like waffling about it. Do I really want to let this person go? Sometimes when you're dealing with somebody like this, you know, there's some, you get, you're still getting something out of the relationship. Who knows? The sex may be great. <laughs> you know what I mean? They may be helping out with, you know, certain things. They may It may be convenient. It, you both might be living at their place instead of your place. Like, there is some convenience here that is making it difficult for you to be like, oh, do I really want to let it go? And that's toxic. That's toxic. Because when you're done with somebody, you should be done with them, right? And when you realize that you're... You know, when you realize that you're staying in a relationship for the few benefits that it gives you and none of those benefits are true love, respect, or connection, that's when you are firmly in the realm of manipulating and exploiting somebody. And, you know, it could be many degrees of that. It may be like, well, I didn't do any harm. They wanted it. They wanted to provide me with all this. I didn't force them. Nevertheless, you know you're doing it under a certain guise that isn't true. You know, there's truth and then there's truth, you know, and honesty, right? There's truth and then there's honesty and being honest with yourself about your intentions. Show me some energy here. Yeah, self-indulgent, distant, one more, and haunted, right? This is what I feel is happening here for you. There is a feeling of being haunted a little bit here because it's like, you know you want to ascend. You're a little afraid. Let's see if we can get this. I'm going to get you to focus here. You're a little bit afraid of it. You don't know if you want to let go of this connection, right? You don't know if uh, you're ready. And there's some guilt there associated with it, right? There's some guilt associated with it because you know, you know that you're not into it anymore. You know you should really let this person go. Distant, there's a distance, and a self-indulgence, here we go, this is more energy that I'm talking about, distance and self-indulgence, we're talking about, um, sometimes this camera will not focus for, for love or money, I never know why, um, you're, you're feeling far from them, you're not feeling close, you're not feeling like, you know, this, this connection is, is, is loving and tight and equal, for you, Gemini, it's difficult for you to be in a connection with somebody that you don't feel like they're your equal. If you feel like they're like not, you know, not as smart or, you know, if, if they can't keep up with you, it's hard for you to stay. All right. And that's just that's, you know, that's with a lot of people, but especially that and that Gemini energy. Gemini's you're quick with communication, you know, connection and sharing. And so it's difficult to stay in a connection with somebody that you that you just don't. You guys just don't see eye to eye. It becomes like a chore for you. So be careful. And this haunted energy, this self-indulgent energy. Um, you may be dealing with somebody who themselves is also quite self-indulgent in a sense that they're not willing to put much into it. But it feels to me more like this is really speaking to you, Gemini. You want to be careful not to maintain a connection with someone that already has toxicity in it because you truly are not seeing eye to eye. You truly are not seeing each other as on each other's level. What comes out here? Strength and 10 of swords. Yes, for your person waking up and realizing enough is enough. For them, it's a sort of like they need, they need to grow up. And I think that uh, coming out of this connection and perhaps the breakup or the dis whatever decision you make here is going it's going to be the final sort of blow for them. There probably have been a lot of breakups, get together, break up, get together, fights here. And a lot of it will have been you probably letting out your anger on this person because you, like I said, to a degree, you resent them. 
You're like, my God, why don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Or why can't we talk, communicate on the level that I need to, you know? And so there may, you know, you may have let that out on them, but they can't help it. They're just not on that level. Again, it's, I hate to say it, but it feels, you know, like, you know, you're dealing with somebody you think is just a bit dumber than you. And it's like, but what's happened is that the fighting has been there, the recrimination. And for them, the end of this relationship or the end of this toxic energy will be the end of them also continuing to have their ego slaughtered. You know, and they may rise up out of this and be stronger. For you, strength card is coming because, yes, you need to control your emotions and lust and desires here. It's about you being in control and not your emotions being in control, not your passion being in control, not what you desire being in control of your life and the decisions you make, but you being in control. This is also Leo energy. Strength has come in. That is the card for Leo energy. Okay. There's a lot of, uh, you know, you have a lot of friends around you right now. You're doing well with a lot of friends and things like that. You have a lot of support around you. So Gemini, do the right thing and, and really make the right decision from a right place, right? If you are tired of taking care of this person, you are tired of sort of even, you know, mommying them or daddying them, whatever the case may be, this is the time to let go. You've been carrying a lot of their burdens, and again, the resentment has started to come in. The distance has started to come in. You feel quite haunted about your true feelings. And it's time, the energy of, of it just being, being, you know, evaporated, burned, done. That there's a depression here amongst the two of you. A lot of tears. You know, the rain also, a lot of tears, a lot of fighting, a lot of hurt feelings, and it's gotten to that place, and it just doesn't need to be to, at that place anymore. You're not dealing with somebody who's particularly toxic in and of themselves. You're just dealing with the dynamic where the two of you are not well-matched anymore. You may have been in the beginning, but you're not anymore. And before it really gets to a dark place and you begin to do things to each other that you regret, because once again, it's just that you guys don't see eye to eye. It's not that either one of you is particularly bad or evil to the other or anything like that. It wasn't as though anybody cheated on anybody else or anything like that. But it's like you don't want this you know, this discrepancy and this, I want to say friction to eventually turn into just open hostility because then you walk away, you're not able to be friends. And ultimately, I think the decision here where we start the, started the reading off Gemini is you making, really thinking and meditating on the best way to handle the situation so that you can come out of it and remain friends, right? Because there, it, I don't have any energy here that tells me you shouldn't be. There's, there certainly should, and there's a chance for friendship out of this once it's finished, once it's done. But that's what you need to work on now before this toxicity level begins to rise, all right? All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me for Toxic Love. This is a series. Um, I have now five series on my channel. I'll be live streaming every day, Monday through Friday. Mondays at 4 p.m. is the Toxic Love series. This was the first ever episode. And today we read for, uh, let me remind myself, Taurus, Scorpio, and Gemini. Next week, Monday, it'll be three, maybe Gemini again, maybe Taurus again, maybe Scorpio again. But we will pick three new cards from my deck to see who is coming in and who is going to get the reading next Monday, what toxic situation needs needs the reading from me, right? Um, and I hope to see you guys there. If you're looking for readings for your sign, uh, just check out my channel. You know, uh, Tuesday air, we have Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Wednesday is water. I read for Pisces, Scorpio, and Cancer. Thursday is earth, where I read for Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. And then Friday, we have Friday fire, where I read for Leo, Aries, and Sagittarius. Those, all four of those series are live streamed at 11 a.m. Eastern time from my channel. And again, Mondays, 4 p.m., Toxic Love. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Don't forget to take a moment and look for your talisman. That will be your reminder of everything that you've gleaned from this reading for this week and the coming weeks as well, as long as 
if you resonate with this reading as long it as it pertains to your situation. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much, Gemini. Thank you so much, Taurus. Thank you so much, Scorpio. I love you all. Have a wonderful week. I wish you love, light, and happiness. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully, for Tuesday Air, episode 2, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye-bye now.